Welcome to another episode of Business Talk here on businesstech.co.za. I'm your host, Michael Avery, and today we've got a very interesting guest with us who's at the forefront of investment migration and citizenship programs, Michael Martin, the head of the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Unit. He's a local Kittian who's made significant contributions to the financial landscape. He holds a graduate diploma from the International Compliance Association and Manchester Business School, a certificate in international trust management from the Society of Trust and Estate Practitioners, and a certificate in managing financial services from the University of the West Indies. He's held esteemed positions in renowned companies such as the National Caribbean Insurance Company, National Bank Trust Company, Company and Saggy Core Life. And today we're very fortunate to have him with us to delve into the recent waves that St. Kitts and Nevis has created in the investment migration industry with some new legislation for the uh, Citizenship by Investment Program. Michael, uh, two mics maybe do make a right. Great to have you on the show. Uh, firstly, uh, when you look at what St. Kitts and Nevis has done here, you've created um, some ripples, some waves in the in the industry recently. Could you just provide an overview of some of the key changes that were introduced in this new legislation for your citizenship by investment program? Well, Michael, as you may be aware, our country, St. Kitts and Nevis, has always been at the forefront of innovation in this industry. We started in 1984, and the new administration the, new, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, they have done some really deep introspection on how we evolve and communicate the value of our program as a country. This has led them to make numerous critical changes to our citizenship by investment program, which will not only change the face of the CBI program, but will also change the shape of the global investment migration industry. We have one of the strongest economies in the Caribbean region with business policies designed to foster growth and high quality of life. And all of that make a favorable environment to set up a family or business. These changes align with the privilege of holding Kittitian and Nivision citizenship and we want to continue to attract investors who understand and value that. For example, we have transformed the previous Sustainable Growth Fund into a Sustainable Island State Contribution Investment. And the contributions start at $250,000 US dollars or 4.6 million South African rands for a single applicant. Investors contributing towards this option will be advancing their new country, St. Kitts and Nevis, into a sustainable island state. Sustainability is very important to us, especially in this era of climate change. So that is why we are pursuing that, that angle. We are excited to reintroduce the real estate investment option at the initial minimum investment value of $400,000 or 7.4 million South African rands. And we have tightened the real estate rules for developers so that investors receive true value for their investment. We also have the approved public benefit projects that start at 250,000 US dollars, 4.6 million Runs. These projects in the country are designed to maximize employment, transfer technology, and build local capacity on the island through sustainable development. That, as I said before, is very, very important to us. We want to ensure that our program benefits our people and benefits our country. So investors aged 16 years and older, they're now required to have a mandatory interview, either virtually or in person, at a location we will specify and approved by our board of governors. Once an application has been approved, the certificate of registration must be collected in person in St. Kitts and Nevis or at an embassy 
or consulate specified by us. Our Board of Governors regulates all the authorized agents and international marketing agents who must comply with having their businesses registered under the laws of St. Kitts and Nevis. That is very important because we want to make sure that our international marketing agents comply with our laws so that they maintain the integrity of the program. We have reconfigured the program, looked at increasing the value for the investor and the country, and really tightened our security controls, as you can see, to ensure that investors and our international stakeholders remain confident in our program. Those are some very interesting changes, and again, you know, shows how St. Kitts and Nevis is at the forefront of uh, citizenship by investment programs internationally. How is the feedback from stakeholders, both within St. Kitts and Nevis and from the international community, influenced the formulation of these new regulations? Well, as you know, Michael, the investor migration industry has been under some really heavy scrutiny in the last few years. As a government, we have been proactive in responding to the queries from our international partners. St. Kitts and Nevis was proud to host in February this year the roundtable discussion between ourselves, government representatives of the five Caribbean CBI nations and the United States government. The United States have acknowledged that CBI revenues are invaluable for funding major infrastructural and development projects and for building resilience in the Caribbean. Of course, that is a mutual interest because resilience in the Caribbean is important to the United States um, national security. And in an effort to be collaborative and cooperative, we mutually agreed on six principles which all safeguard Caribbean citizenship by investment programs and will implement and enhance and safeguard the security and integrity of the CBI programs. In addition, at the recent EU CELAC summit in Brussels in July, we participated in deliberations alongside our other Caribbean partners and the EU to discuss the EU's concerns and recommendations for the sustainability of the CBI programs. We believe that a collaborative and cooperative approach is the best way to ensure that we come out with win-win situations and solutions. It's not a case of them against us or us against them. That's not the way we see it. And so these conversations are ongoing and we are doing everything possible to clamp down on illicit persons who want to use our investment migration programs for illegal purposes. I mean, and that's such an important point you raised there because for the, the, the Caribbean um, to uh, use these programs to benefit the Caribbean islands and to ensure that there is um, capital, foreign capital flowing into the region, skills, know-how, entrepreneurs, businesses, creating dynamism, but also building that, um, uh, that, that resilience against uh, things like climate change and focusing on sustainability and building infrastructure. You know, it's a very unique way of, of attracting global capital, but you've got to make sure that you're closing the loopholes to those who, who are, you know, using this without the, the correct integrity. Can you just elaborate on the specific safeguards or measures that have been put in place to prevent the misuse or the abuse of the CBI program? That's, that's a very good question. And uh, I want to tell you that the St. Kitts and Nevis program, prior to the recent improvements, already had exceptionally high standards of due diligence to ensure that only high quality applicants would be approved and receive the benefits of citizenship of St. Kitts and Nevis. So the additional safeguards include 
the introduction of mandatory interviews on all main applicants conducted as part of the due diligence process prior to approval in principle. We have also had a tightening of the scope of eligibility of certain dependents who can be included in the application. We have enacted into law an official list of nationalities who cannot apply for the program. We have implemented advertising restrictions for the program and penalties for agents or promoters who act in breach of these restrictions. What we have seen um, from time to time is that some um, agents or promoters um, engage in, in false advertising and advertising a price for uh, the, the program which is way below the, the legal uh, minimums. And so we have introduced those restrictions in order to control that. We have tightened also the registration and licensing requirements for authorized agents and licensed promoters and extended the legislated application process in time to facilitate the additional time required for conducting the mandatory interviews as part of the due diligence program. So where that used to be 90 days, it's now 120 days. And we have introduced mandatory in-person collection of the certificates of registration and the passports. I think uh, as a suite of measures, that certainly does um, tighten things up considerably. From a minimum perspective, I know investors used to be able to gain citizenship through your program for only, uh, what was it, 150,000 US dollars, if I recall. Why should South Africans now spend a minimum of 250,000 US dollars through the same program? Um, in fact, several years ago, the minimum investment amount to acquire citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis was $250,000 or 4.6 million South African rands. However, we focused on the global supply and demand of the CBI industry and significantly reduced the investment threshold to match global trends, which turned out to be a disservice to the country because what that did was to attract the, the wrong type of investor, the investor or applicant, an applicant who was not really interested so much in, in investing in the country and helping to develop the country, but who was only interested in, in getting a passport. We are saying that we are no longer in the passport selling business. We offer investment opportunities and those investment opportunities have an added bonus of acquiring the honor of citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis. So St. Kitts and Nevis's initiatives have prompted the country to become a remarkable global competitor. We have a lot to offer a discerning South African investor. Look at our sound government and safe legal environment. We have a developing healthcare system we have a strong expanding economy. Our population is small and we have the appetite to grow our country to be one of the most attractive in the Caribbean region. So it does not make sense to us to be giving that privilege away. We want to attract distinguished investors who have demonstrated exceptional accomplishments possess substantial investment capabilities and are committed to making significant contributions to the country's growth and development. The primary objective of this approach is to ensure that St. Kitts and Nevis maintains the highest standards of citizenship and fosters a vibrant community of nationals who share a common vision for the nation's development. St. Kitts and Nevis is on a path towards sustainable growth 
and the changes to the program are an indicator that sets it apart from other programs. So high net worth South Africans should consider St. Kitts and Nevis as their destination to invest in professionally record regulated projects or contribute meaningfully towards socioeconomic advancement. That is our vision and our goal for our program. And, you know, reasons that uh, investors no doubt will fully understand and support. Uh, I know the one thing that business and in the investor community in particular don't like is uncertainty. So how confident can investors be that there will be no further massive changes to your CBI program from here? Well, we really cannot say that there will be no further um, changes, although well, the changes may not be massive changes, but because we are constantly monitoring the program in, 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 in collaboration and cooperation with our international partners, we from time to time expect that we will be making some um, adjustments to the program to ensure that it maintains in integrity, transparency, accountability, and remains the exclusive program that discerning investors would want to be a part of. Just finally, Michael, can you provide a timeline uh, for the implementation of this new legislation and when applicants can expect to see the changes take effect? The new regulations were implemented on the 27th of July with immediate effect. So all new CBI applicants who apply after that date will be subject to the new eligibility amended pricing and interview requirements and the other requirements that have been put into those new regulations. So they are up and running and we we hope that um, every applicant would um, comply with those regulations. Well, Michael, um, that's all the time we have for uh, today. I'm, I'm going to have to say that I'd love to come and visit you in St. Kitts and Nevis. I've never been to the Caribbean, but I certainly uh, love most things uh, about the culture from cricket to the sunshine and where you talk about a booming economy. Well, that's uh, absolutely right up my street. So hopefully uh, we can do uh, a show from St. Kitts and Nevis uh, sometime soon and uh, bring my audience closer to this dynamic uh, economic powerhouse so that is, again, at the forefront of the citizenship by investment programs uh, that are truly about empowering local economies in a partnership model. And I think that's really what these legislative changes have been all about. So uh, look forward to hopefully catching up with you in saying kids and never sometime soon. Take care. And we would most certainly welcome you, Michael. So come on down. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Michael Martin, the head of the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Unit, sharing a little bit more about uh, changes, adjustments that they've made to the program just to ensure that it, um, it maintains its integrity and improves transparency uh, and also the shared value approach that the program really is uh, pioneering here on Business Talk, only on Business Tech.